So the question is, what are you going to do with all this? Well, the first thing you're going to do with all this is you're going to enjoy every single game on the planet in its full, maximum, tricked out configuration. And you're going to enjoy it nice and silky smooth. And you're going to smile all the time. You're going to have a dumb grin on your face like mine all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. But what else can you do? What else can you do? Well, we have a special treat. I love this man. We've been working together now in our industry for a quarter of a century. Few have made a greater contribution to the advancement of the technology and the art of video games than this man. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Sweeney. Great to see you. Now, you don't get an introduction like that every day, brother. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> Paragon. <laughs> Paragon. What is Paragon? I don't know what you. Wait, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you one of the early, early adopters, early uh, previewers, game testers of Paragon? All right, you the man. All right. So, so anyways, um, we could talk about all kinds of stuff. We can spend here. We can. We can talk all night. And then tonight, after, after this, we will talk all night. I mean, there's so much that's happening in the game industry. I mean, one of the first things, of course, uh, 25 years ago, when we first started both of our companies, uh, and we were trying to bring uh, revolutionized gaming with PC gaming, uh, there was a lot of technology to, to create. There were, there were a lot of issues in the, in the industry, but we worked through an enormous amount of it. So the, the one thing that you and I really, really share and is our belief that the PC gaming platform is an open platform is one of the reasons why innovation happens. You know, could, could you, uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's the openness of the PC platform that's made uh, the center of innovation for the entire technology in industry for at least 30 years. Um, the GPU revolution um, started right here on PC uh, before uh, DirectX even um, with OpenGL and its predecessor libraries. The VR revolution now is being driven mm -hmm. on PC where the open architecture means that you can combine NVIDIA GPUs and uh, VR headsets from multiple manufacturers together and everything just works. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's an awesome platform, which means that developers from a wide range of industries with a wide range of games and uh, different tastes can all contribute to it in yeah. amazing ways. It's, it's the world's best platform for, for all kinds of gaming, whether it's MMORPG, whether it's first-person shooters, it's going to be the best platform for VR. It's, it's just the best platform for a lot of different things for that very reason, that, that the entire world the smart engineers of the entire world can all contribute to making that platform better. And because it's wide open, it allows all of us to, to innovate at will. Yeah, absolutely. And at every point in history, PC has always had the absolute best graphics hardware available. That's an important point in the progress of the industry. And it yep. improves every year, thanks mm -hmm. to you. Thank you. And so, <laughs> but if, it, if, it's, if, not, if, not for, if not for Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine, all of that horsepower would be in the car and nobody would be able to enjoy it. <laughs> and so, so uh, no, you know, it, it, it is really not an understatement. And I think all of these people in the audience would, would surely agree that, that uh, if not for the Unreal Engine, computer graphics today, uh, gaming graphics today, wouldn't be nearly as beautiful, nearly as advanced as, as it is. Thank you. And so, so Tim, we're here, we're here to talk about, and you, you and I haven't spoken yet, and I'm dying to know what you're gonna say. And, and so, and we, we just never rehearse, that's our thing. And, and so we gotta just talk on stage. I mean, the, the thing that, that I'm dying to know is what are, you, what are the things that you can do when, when you have graphics performance like a 1080 and um, uh, you have capability like Pascal? What, what are the type of things that we can look forward to in terms of the future of gaming graphics? Well, you know, this new level of performance you're delivering really bridges the gap. You know, historically, there have been two branches of the computer graphics industry. There's been you know, world-class, photorealistic, movie-quality CG um, rendered offline you know, at hours per frame on these you know, very high-end server clusters. And then there's been real-time graphics powering PC gaming. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we're at the point now where we can ask, can we not have both? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so here, here I'm looking at, at um, something that is a photograph. I mean, it's an amazing photograph of, of uh, I think this is, this is uh, what you guys do with your, 
Uh, this is a character study. This is how you guys designed the characters of Paragon. Yeah, that's right. You know, Paragon is the new MOBA from Epic Games uh, that combines the classical elements of MOBA gameplay mm -hmm. with very high-quality graphics. And as we go about designing new characters, we create these visual prototypes uh, to ask, what is the absolute best visual fidelity we uh, should strive for as a team? Mm -hmm. We do a lot of these experiments. They're often running at one or two or five frames per second. Um, and we ask ourselves, you know, what is possible? And then we strive to achieve that in real time. And this is what this is? This is a character study of something you can do in one or two or five frames per second? And so what are some of the special effects that we're looking at? I mean, how did you guys... This looks amazingly beautiful. What makes it beautiful? Well, we're seeing, seeing a very realistic material model, um, yeah. a physically-based material model that simulates the microscopic interactions between light um, and the properties of a material. Mm -hmm. So you get really nuanced appearances to the metal on the character's uh, armor um, and the light transfer through his skin, um, the shading on the hair, uh, and all of these other uh, physically-based effects, which we now generate not by just sitting down and winging it, but we actually study real objects in the real world, uh, hair of real people, um, skin. We go out with photogrammatic um, you know, utensils, you know, little light meters, um, and all sorts mm -hmm. of other devices, mm -hmm. and actually measure the real world. Mm -hmm. And then we iteratively improve what we have in the engine until we've actually matched it and mm -hmm. achieved it. So physically-based materials we're looking at, the skin shader, um, obviously, our skin has, uh, has, has permeability, so there's this, there's this notion called subsurface scattering. Light comes in, picks up on some of the, the tint of your, of your blood and your flesh, and then it scatters in all kinds of directions, and it gives you that lively look instead of a chalky, chalky cartoony look of, a, of skin. Uh, the, the, the cloth is materially, physically based and, and uh, looks like cloth, and, and the thing that's really, really cool is it's just the, the shiny material looks, looks uh, so real. It just looks so incredibly real. And so this is something that, that today, of course, uh, we can't enjoy uh, in real time. However, however it, sure would be, it sure would be amazing if we can enjoy this someday in real time. Yeah, perhaps someday you can create some GPU technology that will make it possible. You know, guys, I, that, that is, that's a challenge. I think that's a challenge. That's a challenge. And you know, Tim, Tim, I would like to just tell you that someday has arrived. <laughs> Can we take a look at this, please? What do you think? Now, I hope you guys realize, I hope you guys realize everything was running in real time. That was not a movie. That was computer graphics generated in real time, courtesy of the amazing team that Tim leads at Epic. This is the future of graphics.
available today. Available today. That's, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, team. Good job, Tim. So amazing. So amazing. Hey, guys, you know, just, just for kicks, just for kicks, let's take a look at some of the clocks. Can we? You guys want to take a look at the clocks? It's up there. Can you guys see it? I know, it's, 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 it's insane. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The GPU is running air-cooled. Air-cooled. The GPU is running at 2.1 gigahertz. That is the fastest clocks of a GPU that has ever been achieved. Water-cooled or air-cooled. Air-cooled or water-cooled. I think the only, the only faster is a Maxwell GPU immersed in liquid nitrogen. And only barely. <laughs> and only barely. Because of the amazing craftsmanship, because of the engineering that has been done on this product, its overclockability is just incredible. And look at that. It's running at just a nice, cool as a cucumber, 65 degrees C. 67 degrees C. <laughs> you guys added two degrees to the room. You guys, all of you added two degrees to the room. Incredible.